So to begin with, straightforward derivative, you needed to know two rules, namely product and chain rule. So the product rule is the V, you can even see my U and my V there. And this is where I start. You can see there's my V, U dash, there's U, and here comes V dash. But of course, to do V dash, you need chain rule, right? So you can see this is really x squared uh, minus 1 to the half. You may have rewritten that to help you keep it in your head, but as you know, I've done a few of these before. So that's why my half has come out the front. x squared minus 1, the power reduces. Sorry, I moved that over. Okay, so there's me taking care of the outside function in chain rule. What's left after the outside function? The inside function, which is x squared minus 1. Its derivative is just 2x. Very conveniently, that half and that 2, they cancel. So here's my square root x squared minus 1, and it's there. To be honest, I'd probably say, okay, fine, really, at that point. But let's just think about this for a second. Usually when you differentiate, I mean, you will get, even in the HSC level, you'll get a handful of questions and all they ask you to do is just differentiate. And at this point, you've used train rule, you've used product rule, you're done. You're probably going to get two marks at that point, okay? But, but, suppose this is the function, right? And it comes in the context of more than just differentiate. Maybe you have to, maybe this function comes from something else that you've done, or you have to graph it, or whatever. Okay. So you can see if I go forward, I actually gain insight because I can get this whole thing on a single denominator, right? So right up there in the numerator, I can factorize that guy, I can work out where its solutions are, and that'll become more important as you can see later on. So even though I would probably be happy there for you guys, there's no reason why you can't go on. And as you can see, it's quite easy to actually get them on a common denominator because of the nature of this guy and the denominator. All right? So Move forward. Uh, I rushed through a little bit of this, so please tell me. 108.43, yes, no? Yes? Yeah. yeah, okay, good. So just to confirm, in case you weren't there, right? No. I pull out the first gradient, I pull out the second gradient. No, I got 108. I launch straight into the angle between two lines. But you'll notice, I have an absolute value sign around this. Why is that? What is that absolute value about? It could be an actual. I'm sorry. If it's negative, if it's negative, what you're going to find will not be a first quadrant angle. Because think, right? We're trying to think of this kind of scenario, right? Or if you want to be a little more sophisticated, here's, here's tan, right? So being that you want an acute angle in there, that's why we usually have the absolute value signs there. So when I get to this point, that's tan inverse of 3. But that's the acute angle. And the question states, second word in the question, tell me the obtuse angle, OK? Um, there was a question in the previous exam, I think, which also caught you by saying we want the angle between, you know, some line and a particular direction of the x-axis, maybe the negative direction, which is not the normal way. So again, those are situations where you can get an obtuse angle. Okay. Exact value of tan 300. We've talked about this before. Come on, exam technique. You want to get there the quickest way. What's the quickest way? You use your calculator. It, you, you punch this in, it gives you some minus 1.73 blah 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 garbage. You're like, I don't know what that number is. So you square it. You know you can square it and get something nice because 300 degrees, that's the related angle is 60. So you're going to get an exact value, right? So I recognize that as root 3. So that's why I, I put that down straight away. All right, again. Who got the trick at any first shot? Who got it? First go? Good, you recognize it now. Okay, excellent. Cos 3x. If anyone's actually played like proper base baseball against someone who can throw a curveball, or, you know, being in the country, if you've played uh, cricket and you've batted against someone who can do in swing or out swing, right? The first time you try and face that, you're like, what just happened, right? You're like, I swear, the ball was meant to be here, and then it was over there, right? But the second time, you think, hold on, okay, I've seen this guy before, I see what he's doing with his hand. Now you look at this, right? Let me tell you why this is a successful curveball, right? And therefore, by knowing how, why it's successful, how to watch out for it next time, okay? You think, the first line, what's your immediate instinct? What are you thinking? Expand. You're thinking expansion. In other words, you're thinking algebraically. There's, nothing pro there's no problem with that. You should see the difference in squares, so off you go, right? And when you see this line, again, what are you thinking? 
Pythagorean. You're thinking Pythagorean identity because you see square. You're thinking trig. There's no problem so far. Now, when you get to here, you see a square root and you see a square, right? So you think, no problems. I'm doing trig. I'm doing algebra. That's just tan. But it's not just tan, right? Because the reason why the curveball works is because I've... You know how magicians, they do misdirection? It's like they do something with this hand to make you forget I'm doing something over here. This is, it doesn't look like an absolute value question, does it? It doesn't look like it has anything to do with absolute value, but it does because by definition, in the first lesson that I taught you on absolute value, when you square something and then you take its square root, you lose the sign, right? So the square root of tan squared A is not tan A because tan A, whoop, there it is, tan A can be negative, right? But the square root of tan squared a, you can't any way get a negative out of that. That's why you have the absolute value there. Okay.